Hey, how's it going, everybody? That was incredibly weak. Maybe I should try that again. Hey, everyone, how's it going? So this week, news has been kind of uh, slow. That's probably because um, the entire tech booster is almost like, completely out. Next week is actually when Japan gets it, so by then we'll have the entire list, and we'll know exactly what it is we're dealing with in terms of new cards and support. And I can actually start working on that tier list that I've been promising you guys for WCQ. So there you go. But with all the news that came out, there's only one card that I think really deserves the spotlight this week. And that is, uh, where is it here? Uh, Lawless Mutant DAT Optriandus. Optriandus. This thing is amazing. So for those who haven't caught up yet, or just live under a rock for some reason, it's a strike unit, obviously, and its ability is Act Vanguard GB2. Card bus 2 and choose a card for a hand and discard it. Your opponent cannot call uh, to his or her rear guard until the end of your opponent's next turn. And that includes superior calling as well. So what does this mean? Mega Colony finally have something that's pretty good. Almost busted in a way. The reason why I say this is good is because Mega Colony finally have something to counter all of those decks that choose that can just avoid their um what's it called? Their uh, paralyzing effects just by not having a field. And by, by not having a field, Mega Colony can just punish them. And it is raining. Oh boy, that is totally gonna date my video. Anyways, hopefully that uh hopefully the rain doesn't bother this anyways. So back to uh the lawless deity thing. This is really, really, really good. <laughs> Again, because it punishes those who choose not to call Phil against Mega Colony. And, not only that, it can just blow out some games entirely. I know for sure, Great Nature is going to have a tough time against bugs. Grand Blue might have some tough time against bugs if they choose if, if they don't play against it. What else is there? Uh, Kagro might hurt a little bit because they tend not to have a field. But then again, Kagro just kind of loses the paralyzed aspect anyways. And of course, paladins in general just get shafted by this card, um, because you know the whole point of the paladins royal shadow or gold is to call a field, albeit shadow paladins kill their field, but they still call regardless. Either way, this card is going to shift the meta. I want to say significantly, but not so much. For sure, people will have to change their mentality whenever they see Mecha Colony because both machining and dark phase can use it. The way I see things are now, uh, or bleh, the way I see things though, the way things are now, machining might be the deck to play for Mega Colony, but for sure, dark phase will give machining a run for its money. The reason why is because machining suffer from uh, having to build a field and they cannot get rid of it easily. While dark phase, uh, while dark phase uh, has that grade one that can put stuff into soul, and it also can't be targeted by effects, so it can't be retired, locked, or bounced. I mean, I don't think anything bounces field cards from field to hand on your opponent's side, I don't think. Regardless, what I'm saying here is both decks are going to become very viable, and I'm actually quite worried and happy that Mega Colony is going to be a thing. Um, for sure, since I play Grand Blue, I have to be very, very diligent against playing this because um, I know that this is a counter boss too, and I have to make sure that dark face does not get a hand or machining get a hand because then that way they have uh, more leeway in discarding cards so there's that uh yeah that's pretty much all the news that was happening this week um at least that's what i think uh i guess there was that great nature perfect card that came out where if you retire it by an effect you kind of bust one search for another copy it's okay but um I think it'll only work well for a Leopold deck because Leopold can bring back that perfect guard. So there's that, and kind of Hamske, but it, for sure it's not going to be have it's not going to have a place within Big Belly or Shat Noir. But for sure it's a good card. Just you know, it has to have the right deck. Yeah. So that's all the Vanguard news. Um, what's happening with me? Uh, this week has been pretty hectic for me. <laughs> been working pretty much every day. So yeah, I, I have money. I guess I don't know. <laughs> Why am I telling you this? You don't need to know that. Uh, also, I've okay. I, I've uh, it's been about a few days since I posted those two grand blue decks, and it's interesting to see that people want to see the hollow deck over the seven seas deck. I'm pretty sure it's because everyone has seen seven seas, and the deck is pretty much the same everywhere, and it's like one or two choices that are different amongst players. But for Night Rose, I'm quite surprised to see that no one really has an idea of how to play her. I know for sure that I'm still testing things out with Night Rose because of Marid, but I feel like I have a good solid grasp on the deck, and it's 
We'll set eight just has a, has a lot of potential of making the deck better. So anyways, yeah, this this week's video, guys. Sorry it's a bit short. Um, just not a lot of stuff happened. And yeah, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share this with someone who you think would enjoy it. And as always, my fellow vanguards, be sure to stand up to the occasion. I'll see you guys in the next video I make. Bye-bye.